Every single person here is deficient in vitamin D. Mm -hmm. wow. Every cancer patient has a vitamin D deficiency. Anybody with mm -hmm. diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol has a deficiency in vitamin D. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So your body would try to... And does your body have a mechanism to store these vitamins? Yeah, like, so like, okay, so say we think about iron. Yeah. There's a free floating form that we can check in our blood and there's a stored form, which is called ferritin. So we look at hemoglobin, which is a free floating and the stored is ferritin. Sometimes your hemoglobin is normal and the doctors will say your iron's normal, but if they check the ferritin, which is your stored levels, if that's like a one or two, we don't know how you're functioning because that number should be between 50 to 75. Right. So a lot of times when patients come in for iron deficiency, I look at both numbers because we don't really care what's floating around. We care about the stored because that's what's going to help your body long term. Right. right. Yeah. By taking these, are we doing any, are we taking, are these like preventative measures for future risks of anything? Okay, so many things. So nutrient deficiencies lead to so many conditions. For instance, for instance, if we look at vitamin D defi deficiency, every chronic disease right now is being linked to a vitamin D deficiency. Really? Living on the West Coast here, nobody gets enough sunlight. Even if we were to sit outside every day during our summer months, mm -hmm. it still doesn't make up for what we lose throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. Every single person here is deficient in vitamin D. Mm -hmm. wow. Every cancer patient has a vitamin D deficiency. Anybody with mm -hmm. diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol has a deficiency in vitamin D. Any autoimmune conditions, so it could be a thyroid condition, it could be a skin condition, it could be a digestive condition like ulcerative colitis or colitis. Yeah. All of these people have a vitamin D de deficiency. Is there a precursor for vitamin D that then gets converted by sunlight? Because I, I know there's a link, but I don't know where that link Yeah, is. so I wouldn't run necessarily say there's a precursor, like if you're sitting in the sun, is that what you're talking well, about? Because what I've heard is if you get enough sunlight, your body creates vitamin D. Yes, so that's only if your skin is uncovered. Mm. A lot of times it's just our arms and our face, right. or maybe a little bit of our legs. We need to literally lay in the sun naked or, in yeah. order for the body to really utilize it from the outside. Like yeah. I said, even if we got sunshine here, so I lived in Arizona for four years. Yep. Everybody there was deficient in vitamin D as well, because we yeah. don't sit outside like fully unclothed right. just to soak up the sun 30 for minutes sure. every day. Yeah. Even if you are by the pool, mm -hmm. you don't sit out there every single day for a certain amount of time. Yeah. There, there's a whole like Reddit, page for this they call it sun tanning yeah i don't know if you've heard of that but it's like literally just lay naked in the sun yeah yeah to try to get that in. what is it about the sun is it absorption that's coming through our eyes our skin like yeah. our head what, yeah what is it exactly skin is our biggest organ but okay. also like they say if you get the say you get 10 or 20 minutes of sunlight every morning and it mm. hits your eyes or it hits your retina it actually helps balance your hormones mm. now everybody here that's at the crack of dawn though right yeah right the at the beginning up. yep so like if we think of hormonal issues everybody is so stressed everybody's cortisol sure. levels which is their stress yeah. levels are completely crazy right now right. if your stress level is off it's going to affect your thyroid which is going to affect your male and female hormones mm -hmm. so there's a huge hormonal component to it too mm -hmm. but yeah it, we, we make it in our skin so you know how people put on sunscreen yeah, yeah. It kind of People defeats, yeah, it defeats yeah. the purpose. Right. Or you put on sunglasses or you put on a cap, right. you're blocking it all out. Right. So here's the other um, kind of the other part to it is yeah. a, a, being in the sun too much is a uh, leading cause to cancer. I, would, I, I disagree with that. Yeah. So um, leading cause of cancer is diet and lifestyle. Skin cancer is in the number one reason for all that all types of cancers right right so when i think of skin cancers there's a lot of people have a poor health don't have a healthy lifestyle they don't have a healthy diet right which is going to promote more growth of those cells mm -hmm. just because you're out in the sun and you burn doesn't mm -hmm. mean you're going to get skin cancer sure. i've never used sunscreen believe it or not this yeah. sounds bogus and when i tell my patients this they freak out especially the women because they yeah. spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars well, because the well I, I don't know if it's pharmaceutical companies, but yeah. they, they push this idea that we need to use sunscreen. Because they're yeah. saying it's drying out your skin, it's going to make you more wrinkly. Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or they push and they want to sell products. I, it's 100% product. It's all marketing based. Yeah. So if you imagine you're putting something topically on your skin, yeah. if you're healthy on the inside, you're not going to, your skin's going to be hydrated. Your skin's not going to get wrinkles and um, you're not going to develop cancer. Mm. Everybody has cancer cells in their body. Yeah. Every mm. single person does. Right. But our immune system has the ability to fight them off. Okay, so would water be the best way to hydrate or is there any other yeah. alternatives? Water is the best. But the thing that I find clinically is a lot of patients are deficient in minerals. 
So iron is a mineral. Calcium, magnesium, zinc, potassium, potassium. copper, these types right. of things are minerals. Right. When we're low on minerals, we drink the water and it literally, we pee it out. It right. doesn't benefit our body in any way. Some people say they drink four liters of water a day and they're always thirsty or their mouth is always dry and their skin's still dry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because their body's not utilizing it. As soon as we add minerals to our water or electrolytes, right. electrolytes and minerals are the same thing. Mm -hmm. right. They actually hang on to the water molecule, push it to our skin, our hair, our organs, our tissue, mm -hmm. and then pull away toxins. Mm -hmm. Right. So say if you're going to get a chronic disease, say you're going to get cancer. If you don't have enough minerals on board, the hydration, you can be drinking four liters of water without minerals and electrolytes, and it could be doing you no benefit, and the cancer sure. could keep developing. Versus if you're hydrated well, mm -hmm. the water molecules take the, the minerals take the toxins away from the cells. They mm -hmm. hydrate the cells, and cancer doesn't like an area of hyd hydration. Cancer doesn't like high right. water content. Yeah. Right, yeah. when, when people say hydration, naturally they think of water, but it's actually also the potassium, the sodium. Yeah. It's the balance of how it interacts with water exactly and so many people are afraid of salt yeah. like okay yeah table salt not the biggest fan of but like celtic salt sea salt pink mm -hmm. himalayan salt these have natural minerals in them mm -hmm. baking soda has natural minerals in them throw a little bit of that in your water daily you're replenishing your minerals for sure every day yeah that's cool yeah and but you then, feel better energy wise your brain like brain feels better there's no brain fog you sure. just feel better overall and even the minerals like uh I, you probably know a lot of these details, but you talk about fighting off cancer cells. Uh -huh. The minerals are used to like get rid of radi free radicals, right? Hundred yeah. percent, yeah. Along with diet and exercise, right? Like, or you go to the ocean. Yeah. The ocean has these negative ions mm -hmm. that counterbalance the positive stress ions we have in our body, other free radicals. Yeah. And it balances that out. Like, if you See, go to a lot of that stuff is like really poorly understood in science. Yeah. Like I, I've been reading a lot about it, where like just walking on dirt. Like yeah. Barefoot. Grounding. Or, yeah, ground, yeah, yeah. There's grounding, there's forest bathing, yeah. there's um, taking like long walks on the beach with the sodium or the smell of like sea salt yeah. is actually helping clear everything up within your system. 100%. Like every patient that walks in the door, I bet like 50% of my patients actually suffer from anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. They go to the ocean and sit there for five or 10 minutes, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, they feel better. Why is that? Mm -hmm. It's because of these ions are like in equilibrium again. Is it because of the large body of water, of water and it has something to do with us or is it just a mixture of everything? So nature itself has a lot of negative ions, which mm -hmm. balances out the free radicals in our body. Free radicals are caused by our diet, our lifestyle, stress, mm -hmm. um, just a very negative impact on our body. And those are what cause disease. So when you go into nature, yeah. whether it be a forest or by the ocean, they have all these natural negative ions in there.